Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So today I'm going to talk about the interpretation of the antibodies testing that is done for the COVID-19. Well, there is a lot of confusion, so I thought to clear that confusion before going into the details of that interpretation of the IgG and IgM antibodies related to the COVID-19. First, let's talk about the natural history of COVID-19. Let's suppose this is the natural history of the COVID-19 28-day cycle. This is the entry of organism into the body, entry of virus into the body. So during the first five days, the person is asymptomatic. During the first five days, the person is asymptomatic and this is known as window period. This is called window period. At fifth day, symptom starts. Onset of symptoms. So the onset of symptoms occur at the fifth day. But the person is infective one day before the onset of symptoms. So the person is infective over here. Though the infectivity is there during the during the incubation period that, that is during the first five days but the highest infectivity is one day before the onset of symptom now when IgM appears in the blood of a person that is five days after the onset of symptoms so a tenth day a tenth day of total cycle or at the fifth day of the onset of symptom the IgM become positive in the blood so if you are doing IgM before that that is less than five days of the onset of the symptom you will get the false negative result because there is no IgM production at all now it goes up 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 and it reaches to the peak at 14 day 14 day of the total cycle and if you minus the five days so at the ninth day of the symptom and the IgG appears at the 14th day of the total cycle and ninth day of the onset of the symptom so you can go for IgG at the ninth day of the onset of the symptoms and it remains then the blood we do not know for how long it remains in the blood we do not know for how long it provides immunity and we do not know whether it provides protection further or not whether the person is at risk of acquiring acquiring the infection or not but keeping in view in other infa infections we presume that it provides immunity and that is the key role in the plasma donation and that has shown positive results so the the the, uh, the IgM the IgM becomes undetectable at 28th day of whole cycle or 23rd day of onset of symptoms so if you are doing IgM after 23 days there is no role of it when will you go for antibody testing that is the IgG and IgM point number one whenever you are in doubt doubt mean you, you are having high suspicion that this person is co uh, this person ha has COVID-19 but the PCR test but the PCR testing is negative so when you are in doubt go for the titers go for the IgM and IgG as we know that the uh, false negative result with the PCR is very high so in order to confirm that we can go for IgM and IgG Point number two, to look for recovery, whether the patient has recovered or not, we, we can go for antibodies. Plasma donation, and there is criteria for plasma donation. So the one criteria is you must have antibody titers, that is the IgG, to confirm whether you are infected asymptomatically. You are living a, in a place where other people are exposed to you. Like for example, the healthcare workers, and uh, you are in doubt whether you were exposed, whether you were infected, and your infection passed out asymptomatically. So you can go for the titers. If the IgG titers are high, it means you were infected recently. It means you have got protection 
it means you are asymptomatic it means some people have just a, a, a mild flu a, a fever fatigue just for one day and they're recovered now coming toward the main bulk of the of, of the of the today's lecture when the pcr is positive igm is negative igg is negative what does it shows it shows the person is in vento period or incubation period it shows what the person is in incubation period these two when the pcr is positive igm is positive igg is negative and when all the three are positive this shows acute infection acute infection both shows acute infection the fourth one when the pcr is negative igm is positive and the igg is negative now this one is very really important and we see a lot of results like this what does it shows it shows that the pcr that the negative pcr is false negative negative pcr is false negative so you repeat pcr so you repeat pcr in 72 hours you repeat pcr now this one pcr is negative igm is negative the igg is positive it shows recovery patient is recovered and he has got antibodies this patient can donate plasma this one pcr is positive the igg is positive now this shows patient was recovered because the igg is positive and he is infected again pcr is positive he was recovered and he is infected again point number one second input second interpretation is this is the late phase of infection the recovery phase of infection when the igm became negative so during the, during the later stages what happens the igm become negative so either it is the later stage of infection or it is what it is reinfection both can both are possible depending upon the clinical scenario when the igm is positive and igg is positive but the pcr is negative what does it mean recovery phase of infection recovery phase of infection what is igg and what is igm igm these are antibodies so what if a person is immunocompromised severely immunocompromised these antibodies will be not produced so uh, taking that into consideration so if the person is having pcr positive igm and igg negative we can think of uh, acute infection in a patient with a severely immunocompromised condition so this was a short video regarding the antibodies and uh, the, the the gold standard is always pcr the antibodies testing i already mentioned when when you should go for the antibody testing these four are the indication thank you for watching